In this lesson, we're going to look at some other examples that don't follow simple Mendelian patterns of genetics. Um, for this lesson, we're going to look at when a gene has more than two alleles through the example of the human ABO blood groups. So what it means to be multiple alleles is that there would be, in, in contrast to what we've been talking about with Mendelian genetics and even the co-dominance and incomplete dominance, where we just had two alleles, like a dominant and recessive allele, or the co-dominant alleles or the incompletely dominant alleles, there were always only two alleles there when we were discussing and doing practice problems with those scenarios. So with multiple alleles, there would be three or more possible alleles. Basically, any, anything more than two <laughs> would define that as multiple alleles. And interestingly, this is how most genes and populations exist in these multiple allelic forms, not the ones we've been discussing with Mendelian genetics and our other examples. So the example we're going to be working with a bit more is the human ABO blood groups. So in this table, we have the four ABO blood groups, type A, type B, type AB, and type O on the left. And these would be the phenotypes or the blood types that are expressed due to the combinations of the alleles that an individual has. The genotypes for those phenotypes are shown in the second column. So for example, a person with type A blood um, would either be capital I superscript A, capital I superscript A, or capital I superscript A lowercase i. And if you look down, let's just keep looking at the genotypes for now. For type B, it's similar to type A. There's two possible genotypes for someone that has type B blood. They can either be homozygous or heterozygous. Um, and so the reason that there is the heterozygote is because of type O blood, which is recessive to type A and B. Type O blood has only the recessive allele, little i, little i. So this, first of all, I want to point out that there's three alleles here, i, a, i, b, and little i. So this is why this is a case of multiple alleles. And those three alleles and the different combinations that they can exist in in the genotypes result in the four phenotypes. Before this, we've only seen three phenotypes at most. Now, the ABO blood group is also an example of codominance because of the type AB blood. Type, type AB blood just trying to make a note here. Oh. Okay, so we have codominance and we have multiple alleles within the ABO blood group. And that's because the alleles for type A and type B are codominant. So let's take a look at how that influences the phenotypes and results in these blood types by looking at a diagram of what the blood cells look like for these groups. So what it means to be type A blood and have the allele for type A is that the blood is expressed having A antigens, a type of antigen on the surface of the red blood cell called the A antigen. And antigens are responsible for the production of antibodies that are used in immune responses to pr basically protect a person from foreign bodies, including uh, incompatible blood types and per perhaps a transfusion scenario. So remember that the A, type A blood, could be had by someone that is homozygous, having two alleles for IA or the A antigen, or somebody that has only one allele for the A antigen and a recessive allele that doesn't actually express itself. There's only A antigen here. And likewise, somebody with type B blood only expresses the B antigen. If they're homozygous dominant, then they have only the allele for that antigen. And if they're heterozygous, and they carry the recessive allele, it's not expressed. In fact, somebody with type O blood doesn't have the antigens for A or B. 
But here in the type AB blood at the bottom left, you can see the example of codominance because having one of each allele, IA and IB, they're both going to be expressed and neither one is masking the other instead of in, um, if you recall, incomplete dominance where they blend together, like the pink snapdragons were resulting from one that had the allele for red and one the allele for white. But here it's like the Rhone cattle where you saw both white and brown pattern, both A and B antigens are expressed on the surface of the red blood cell. Now this is going to have implications in who can give and receive blood from each other. And so back to this table, you can see just for the ABO blood group, this doesn't take into consideration the RH factor yet, which we'll look at soon. Um, somebody with type A blood can get blood from types A or O. Why is that? Let's take a look here. Somebody with type A blood can receive from themselves, well, basically the same blood type, or from type O because there's no antigens on type O that the A blood cell would perceive as being um, invader and cause that immune response producing antibodies. Instead, type A blood um, is going to produce antibodies against type B antigens, so they cannot receive from B or AB because of the presence of the B antigen. Let's just stay here and, and continue these um, who can get blood from who. So blood type B likewise can get blood transfusions from other people with type B or from type O, but not from A and not from AB. Blood type AB can interestingly receive blood from all the others because type A has the A antigen that type AB has. It's not going to perceive it as um, an invader and trigger that immune response. Type B similarly has the B antigen that AB also has and type O has no antigen so it's never perceived as a threat. So AB is the universal recipient here and type O unfortunately, can only receive from other type O's. Any other of the blood types that have the antigens will lead to an immune response for type O that could be fatal for that person because basically the blood will start to clump, clump or clot or agglutinate is the term technically, um, while inside their body during a transfusion. Okay, now of course, ABO blood type is just one aspect of our blood group, um, and it's more complex even than the RH factor added to this, but we're going to add in the RH factor to this um, scenario to see how that affects the ability of a person to receive or give blood to other people. Now, RH factor is actually like Mendel's pea plant type of inheritance. It's completely dominant. There's going to be recessive and a dominant allele just two alleles. So this is not multiple alleles. There's no codominance here. It's just like traditional Mendelian genetics type of inheritance. Um, so the alleles for the RH factor, oh, which by the way, RH factor, that term was derived from the studies they did in rhesus monkeys. So RH comes from rhesus monkey. Um, and so like us, they're primates and they have similar um, properties of their blood and patterns of inheritance that we can study and understand more about ourselves through some of these studies of these model organisms like the chimpanzees and the rhesus monkeys. Okay, so in the RH factor um, pattern of inheritance, the RH plus allele, that would be one allele, is dominant to the RH negative allele, which is recessive. But remember that a person would need to have two alleles for every gene. So you'd have to have two RH alleles um, and all the possible genotypes are listed below here along with their corresponding phenotypes. So somebody that's RH positive, RH positive has positive blood type. Somebody who's RH positive, RH negative or they're heterozygous is also a positive blood type 
because the Rh positive allele is dominant to the Rh negative allele. Rh negative allele will be masked. And then the fully recessive would be Rh negative, Rh negative, and that's a negative blood type. So if you wanted to do a Punnett square for Rh factor, you would do that separately from the ABO blood group. If you wanted to try to figure out what your blood type is based on knowing um, maybe other members of your family. And we'll do an example together, but for the ABO blood group with the multiple alleles. To do the RH factor, you would do it separately. You'd have to do two separate Punnett squares. But adding in the RH factor, it does um, complicate things a little bit in terms of the who can give blood and who can receive blood from which other groups. So if you, we look first down the column, Notice that type O negative has a blood drop in all of the, the cells, showing that O negative is the universal donor. It can give blood to any other blood type, including positives and negatives. And that's because O negative has no antigens for A or B or the Rh factor on, their blood, on the surface of their blood cell. So they're not perceived by any of those other blood types as being a potential threat and triggering that immune response. In contrast, if we go across the row, AB positive is the universal recipient because it has all three of those antigens on the surface of its blood cell, the A antigen, the B antigen, and the RH factor antigen, so it can receive from any blood type that has any of those antigens or doesn't have the antigens. So let's wrap up this lesson with a practice problem of a Punnett square applying what we now know about multiple alleles. Now you will need to know the genotypes and phenotypes for the ABO blood groups. That is something that you'll need to practice and memorize and then be able to apply it to a Punnett square scenario like this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this out, um, give it a try, and then we'll go through it together. So here's the setup for this problem. If you haven't solved it yet, make sure you have the right setup. The parental cross would be a woman with type O blood. Her genotype would be little i, little i crossed with a man that has type AB blood. So his genotype would be I superscript A, capital I superscript B. So I've set this up in the Punnett square now, and we're gonna go ahead and solve it, and then answer the question about what the genotypes, or blood types rather, of the kids might be. So if you haven't already solved it, pause the video. Don't, uh, don't check yourself yet. Um, but here is the solve Punnett square and the answer to the question. Notice that Half of the boxes are going to have the uh, capital I superscript A little i. Half of them are going to be capital I superscript B little i. So the question's asking about the possible blood types of the kid. And although I wrote genotypic results there, I meant to put phenotypic results. Let me fix that. And go ahead and take a look at that. So to interpret this, we would say that two out of four or half of, or there's a 50% chance of one of their children having type A blood, and there's a two out of four or 50% chance of any of their kids having type B blood. And it's just like flipping a coin. Every time you flip a coin, you have a 50% chance of getting heads or tails. Every time they have a child, there'd be a 50% chance that that child has type A or type B blood. It's not like if they have four kids, two of them would have type A, two of them would have type B. That's a possibility, but it's not a guarantee. All of them could have type A or, or all of them could have type B. It's just the probability, the chance that it is happening is a 50% each and every time. And each child is an independent um, event of the previous children.